Well, I hate to admit it, but I was wrong. And I got to admit it. It's blindingly obvious. Stagflation is here to stay, my friends. <laughs> I got suckered into the idea of deflation because of Japan. And, uh, and I, the reason is because the money supply doesn't cause inflation. It doesn't. What causes inflation is scarcity. And what causes scarcity is government action, not by the printing press. It is government action. And that's, you can't, you just, you can't deny this anymore. It's the climate Nazis are freaking in charge. And they're leading to stagflation just like the 1970s. There's no other way around this, man. And uh, we're just going to read you a couple articles here because it's, uh, so the reason why Japan was such a good model is because of low inflation, low growth, low interest rates, low unemployment. And none of that was possible in previous economic histories, economic textbooks. None of that made sense. You can't have all those things together. And yet they did. A huge debt to GDP. It was nuts. And it still is nuts. But that was the basis. What caused that, allowed that, was a cheap energy. Those days are gone. It's gone. And it's... uh. We're going back in the 70s. Hey, anyway, let's I'm just no other way around that. You can't have cheap energy, you can't have deflation. There's just no everything is based on energy. So let's go into this. Let's start with what oil is used for in just everyday life. And here's a nice thing: oil in everyday life, whether as a fuel or a feedstock, oil is an integ integral part of your daily life. Kerosene to fire airplanes, window frames to heat your to open up your house. Uh, exterior paints, uh, lampshades, skin creams, lipsticks, cable ca uh, coatings, uh, heating oils, TV sets, <laughs> a toy for your dog, uh, your shoes. Uh, we got even over here, uh, marine flu uh, fuels, lubricants on the wind turbines, which are just evil, heavy fuels to heavy fuel oil to uh, transport products from point A to point B. Uh, center uh, consoles, door seals, tires, signal lights, window seals, fuels, uh, brake fuels. Your, uh, I can't even see what that says. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, credit cards, computers, pens, uh, cameras, rubber boots. Never mind the products that you eat and everything. It's just we, we use fossil fuels for everything. That's just oils. All right. So then we're going to go over here to uh, to what's up with that. And we got uh, climate politics threatens an era of energy poverty. Energy poverty uh, means you don't have cheap energy and you're going to pay more and more for energy. And because energy is used in everything, oil in particularly, um, it's just oil. Let's check this out. Petrochemicals derived from oil and natural gas make the manufacturing of over 6,000 everyday products and high tech devices. Major petrochemicals, including eth ethylene, I can't even read all this stuff, are the feedstock chemicals for the production of many of the items we use and depend on every single day. Modern life relies on these products. We, we zero in on some of them, common household and commercial products. The list may surprise you. Anyway, so I'll put this in here for you to, to read. But detergent, dice, dog collars, drinking cups, dyes, kayaks, insulation, ink, ice chests, uh, house paint, heart valves, hearing aids, Asphalt, aspirin, backpacks, balloons, vaporizers, upholstery, umbrellas, you name it. So just anyway, so let's. <laughs> All right. So right here, we got this guy's freezing death. That's going to be us, man. Uh, we got idiot Prime Minister Boris Johnson calls for aggressive action against the so-called climate co crisis at the U.N., uh, with similar statements that surely have been made dangerously misinformed in the coming months and augurs disastrous energy policy. Humanity has to grow up. Says the idiot Boris Johnson. Can't, I just, oh my goodness, man. We will see desertification, drought, crop failure, desertification, desertification because of more CO2. That doesn't make any sense, you freaking idiot. If the, if the freaking global ice uh, is melting, what does that do? It leads to more moisture in the air, which does what? It rains. Crop failure, mass movement, movements on humanity on a scale not seen before, says this idiot whose predictions surely be as wrong as those of Al Gore's visions of flooding coastlines, but who nonetheless will host the UN Conference of Parties, 20, the COP26. Attending COP26 will be uh, world leaders who adopt a net zero by 2050. Uh, we got Pope, Pope Francis, that's great. 
uh, the Queen Majesty, Greta Thunberg, David Attenborough, none of whom was a client scientist or the academic background of the subject. How are they going to get there? I was just talking to a guy the other day who flies for a living and uh, <laughs> he flies to Davos <laughs> for his clients. <laughs> I was just like, you guys are freaking idiots. The World Economic uh, World Economic Forum says, for example, there would be no point in rebuilding economies and lives if we sacrifice the future of the planet by failing to reduce emissions. Emissions fell during lockdown. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> you see what's going on here, right? They want you dead. Uh, considering ap apocalyptic musings of, uh, of world leaders like Boris Johnson and Sniffy Joe, the apparent naivety of COPE 26 attendees and affinity for some for lockdowns, the pronouncements of the Glasgow conference are likely to be both unprecedented and immature. Whether countries fall through the conference resolutions is a subject for another day. But the proposals of the COP26 will affect the future of energy. And that is going to be stagflation. All right, so we're just going to go into this because here we go. Looks like stagflation is already here. On the same day, the IMF cut its growth forecast for the U.S. economy. The Atlanta uh, Federal Reserve Board warned that transi transitory bout of inflation won't be brief. Stagflation. The IMF reported uh, Tuesday that the international organization lowering growth by a tenth of a percentage point in the U.S. as a full percentage point. We're having a full percentage lower growth in the U.S. And that's just the latest sign that the economy isn't building back better. It might not be building back at all. Uh, take a look at the GDP now estimate by the Atlanta Fed. Basically, it tries to calculate the current GDP in real time by tracking the data from the Commerce de uh, Department. And as a result, the, the now cast can change as new data emerge. Look what's happening. In the third quarter, the first GDP now estimate produced in late July had growth topping 6%. And that's where it stayed until August. But then a flood of new data came out and showing that it suddenly dropped below 3%. <sighs> The latest now cast for GDP growth for Q3 is at a mere 1.3%. If that turns out to be correct, which is fairly likely given the track record, it will mark the slowest quarterly growth in years. It would come despite Biden's $2 trillion stimulus, the stagflation. But again, it's not because of the money printing. It's because of the, cheap, the incredibly cost of energy. Meanwhile, the latest job report came out was ugly. All right, I don't care. I mean, I do care about that, but... Uh, we have 11.7 million unemployed, but we uh, job openings, but 7.7 .7 million unemployed. 1.5 job openings per one unemployed is the highest ever recorded. Uh, but naturally, all right, the government will release its uh, inflation numbers this morning, but consumers don't have to wait to know what's happening. And they talk about the price of gasoline, which I, I mean, I get it, but the, as that is a gauge of inflation, it's silly. Um, and then we got right here in the conference call. With analyst La Lars Fornes, the chief executive of Fastenal Company, Fast Fastenal, which makes supplies used by construction and industrial manufacturers, said that product and shipping cost inflation isn't just high, it's brutally high. The chaos and the impact, not just from the financial perspective, but from all toll that takes on our human capital is immense. Uh, the Atlanta Feds basically said inflation is no longer transit transitory because the current bout could last well into the next year. The danger is already upon us. A survey by the Federal Bank of New York finds that inflation expectations are higher than they've been since 2013. Uh, it looks it's starting to look like the only thing Biden is building back uh, with is a misery of the 1970s. 100%. All right, let's just keep going here. So we got, uh, uh, let's get, what we got here? Grip by energy crisis. Europe considers turning, breaking climate prom promises and turning to coal. Uh, look, they hate coal, but we need it. And they're just going to get just enough to get by. Europe is on the grip of an energy crisis amid rising prices for natural gas. Well, why would that be, you freaking idiots? Uh, increased demand for fossil fuels in the approach of winter that will make access to fuel even more urgent. The price of natural gas on the, con on the continent has risen sharply over the past year, with the European benchmark up nearly 600%. The price of natural gas is up 600%. Going back to what the guy from Fastenal said, uh, the, the inflation isn't just transitory. It's not just ugly. What do you say? It's, uh, uh, what do you say here? Hold on just a second. Let's find my man from fast and all. all right here. Uh, shipping cost inflation isn't just high it's brutally high. Yeah. Well, because of the incredible cost of energy. All right. So we got, uh, 
the price of natural gas has risen by 600%, and it's uh, European, uh, Euro EU is seeking more gas from Russian energy firm Gazprom, which is already Europe's largest provider, providing 35% of the, of the continent's needs. The price fell on Thursday to 120 per megawatt hour after Putin said the country could sell gas, uh, gas to European spot buyers through its domestic market. The previous price was 134 megawatt hour on Thursday. Rising costs have been driven by increased demand in Asia, in other parts of the world, those economies reopen after shutdowns. Well, also because winter's coming, man. The ongoing difficulties with gas supply and costs have reopened the question about the use of coal. Coal is the most polluting fossil fuel, and the European countries have committed to phasing it out by 2030. Europe is already halfway to that goal as of March this year, but the energy crunch has led some power producers to ask Russia for greater supplies of coal as well as gas. Well, that's great, but guess what happens here? Uh, Co Coke and coal prices record high as Chinese steelmakers face pain. Uh, the price of metallurgic metallurgical coal has risen to record highs as trade as trade tensions and border problems push the cost of a Chinese importer sky high. Coal for coking purposes has soared despite declines in iron ore values attributed to Chinese steelmakers. Huh? And what relies on steel? Oh, as everything fossil fuels everything. The value has surged to 140 U.S. dollars uh, to 410 a ton in U.S. dollars this past week, representing more than tripling in price since 2020. And this is for steel. You think we can just get by on solar panels? You're a freaking idiot, man. Mining analyst Peter Strachan said, while the booming price appeared counterintuitive given the slide in iron ore demand, logistical issues in Asia were to play. Shipping costs have skyrocketed. The Chinese are scrambling to pay over 500 a ton U.S. for stuff delivered. X X Newcastle is well over 400 U.S. a ton. That's a new high. With poor domestic supplies of metallurgical coal, Chinese buyers are racing to source shipments from across Asia and North America and as far as Colombia as a result. Major steelmaking nations with limited domestic production, such as India, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, and the EU, are now increasingly turned to Australia. But check this out. So they're looking to Australia. Uh, I think... It gave them opportunity to look at other markets. Queensland coal is sought after uh, is sought after across the world. There are certainly shockwaves sent through the industry, but we're diversified looking at other markets. So what does Queensland say? Oh, check this out. This is from the Climate Council in Australia. Uh, markets are moving. The economic costs of climate, uh, cost of Australia's climate inaction. This is written just like today, right here. We are already counting the costs from climate-driven disasters such as bushfires, droughts, cyclones, and flooding. These worsening climate impacts do not cause physical damage to property. Economic activity is disrupted. Acting swiftly on climate change matters, failing to rapidly cut emissions this decade is forecast to lead to exponential increase in the cost of climate change over multiple generations. The Australian government has failed to recognize the cost of climate change and similarly the significant economic opportunities in, the, in acting swiftly and early on climate change. Uh, why? Because the world is moving to respond to climate crisis with carbon border tariffs now inevitable. Carbon border tariffs. Australians will pay a price to our slow and weak national process in cutting natural greenhouse gas emissions. You see, there's a significant issue here, my friends. The European Union has already announced a carbon border adjustment mechanism and has expected to be the first of many such schemes as countries seek to re-level the playing field on climate actions. Such moves are being considered in other jurisdictions, including Australia's key trading partners. As one of the heaviest per capita emitters in an advanced economy, Australia is under increasingly pressure to use its natural advantages to cut emissions rapidly and deeply this decade and help the goal reach of net zero as far as quickly as possible. These are the fools that are arguing the COP26 people. <sighs> Australians are already wearing considerable climate costs related to worsening extreme weather under high emission scenario costs are more frequent and severe events, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see if they, what they say about coal, because as we can tell, oh, right here, the impacts will be even. Uh, the impacts will not be even across states or sectors. With Queensland and New South Wales to bear the brunt to the dominance of targeted export goods, particularly gold, produced in those states. Every day, the Australian government delays climate action, is hurting households and businesses and miss opportunity and rising costs. You see what's going on here? All right, so let me show you something here. This was fantastic, too. This was on my California just banned backup generators. Get out while you can. And this comment was fantastic. 
talk about why gross domestic product is going into the toilet. Banning normal commerce. If, com if California goes down, this is a comment, Blue Jeans Life. If California goes down, my friends, which they are because they're banning natural gas, they're banning fossil fuels, they're not even allowing nuclear, hell, they're banning hydro. <laughs> if California, California is like the seventh largest economy, eighth largest in the world. This is stagflation. If you don't have cheap energy, you don't have growth in your economy. That's all there is to it, man. So Japan was able to get by on cheap energy for, for decades. We were not able to do that in the 70s. No one was. And as such, we're going back to that because these fools are dominating everything. Now they'll, look, are they all going to get rid of coal? No, but they're going to price most people out of the market for buying things. Boris Johnson and his band of Mary, and Pope Francis and his uh, Prince Charles, you hear about Prince Charles? He, uh, he re retrofitted his, uh, one of his cars to be running on fine wine and cheese. I mean, these guys are idiots, man. They have the money to do that. We don't. Stagflation's coming. So the number one thing you do is in stagflation is reduce what you consume because that's where inflation hits you the most and consumption. And we got to get, we're going to have to get into that, man. And that's what we focus on going forward because how can you reduce cost? All right. Love your thoughts. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. Uh, buy it now before the price goes way up. Everything is reliant on fossil fuels. Everything. California goes down. COP26 comes. Sniffy Joe. The rich get richer and the poor suffer. And the poor is everybody else. I right, will see it.